you can go. Okay. So then, uh, technical viability. The equipment that I will need for production is a camera uh, so that I can film, a tripod so that I can keep my camera still, focus on the um, uh, main objects, um, a monopod in case I'm filming in a busy area, batteries so that I can make the camera work, um, a dolly. I'm I put dolly, although I'm not sure that I'm going to use it, but just in case so that I can move my um, camera along the street without picking it up and moving it constantly. Um, this also does make it bouncy. Uh, tapes so that I can film my footage on them. The crew members that I'd like to use as well is the voiceover artist, which is myself. Um, the, cam the camera operator, Jessica Blaze. Um, the sound operator, Kazine Hall. And presenter myself and editor myself. All these people are easy to get in contact with and don't go far, so they can come along with me whenever I'm filming. Um, the equipment that I'll need for post production is the Mac laptop or computer so that I can edit my footage, um, camera lens to upload the footage, and the iMovie program again so I can edit uh, all my footage. Practical viability, the interviewees in my documentary will be a local police officer, someone from Redbridge Council, a campaign producer, um, some box pops and a journalist. These are not a set in stone because I have been um, contacting other contributors to be in it. Like I've got now, hopefully got two um, campaign producers, box pops again, I'm just going to go for about uh, up to 25 max just so I can get a good um, uh, people's views and stuff. Um, yeah, and I've changed, I was going to Ilford Police Station, I've now changed it to Romford, because it's easier. Um, legal and regulatory considerations will be for Ofcom, let's start with BBC editorial by the way. <laughs> For the BBC editorial guidelines, um, I've chosen the main one, which is children, as I'm not entirely sure what um, the interviewees are going to say to me, and knife crime's a bit of a serious issue. Not many young children want to see gory stuff in it, so um, my maybe my archive footage might be a bit gory as well, so I want to make sure that I put it on at a later time so it doesn't involve children becoming offensive to it or whatever. Um, and also, again, with the interviewees, I don't know whether they're gonna swear. And it might be that they do swear a lot during the interview, so I can't cut it all out when editing. Um, for media law, I've get, got diff, diff information um, as As I'm using like uh, people from different organisations, like I'm using hopefully a journalist from The Sun, um, the campaign producers, etc. If I criticise them any in any way, it may lead to me becoming sued or um, prosecuted, etc. I may have to be maybe fined. Um, so if I follow this and don't criticise them, but talk about them as if I would, like normally, then that, that hopefully that'll be fine. Um, oh, for Ofcom, I've got reconstructions, because a lot of my work will be reconstruct, well, not a lot of it, but some of it may be reconstruction, as it ha can have, like, footage that someone else has filmed. Again, I'd have to um, contact the people that have filmed it, make sure I've got their permission to use it within my documentary. Um, then hopefully that'll be okay. If I don't, and I don't follow them guidelines, then there will be consequences. Um, okay, with the market, I looked at three different um, programs that not relate to my documentary, but uh, have the same target audience and um, are very factual, like mine should be. So we've got Quitting Crime, 
um, this is very like documentary like, so it's very going to be very similar to mine. Although, um, although this one, I don't think was that factual. So again, what I want mine to be unique by having it very factual for people to understand how serious knife crime is. Um, my boyfriend, the M15 hoaxer, <laughs> or something like that, um, <laughs> um, it involves a teenager and her boyfriend and a real life story. So um, he basically like, was trying to fake his, um, the person he really is. Um, this relates to mine, as obviously because it's a true story, it's factual. Um, and it, the, the girl in it was a teenager, and the guy came into the age range of 16 to 24, so again, that relates to my target audience. I've got the last one, The Only Way is Essex. The documentaries are very different, like mine and this documentary or program are very different, although we've still got the same uh, target audience, which is 16 to 4 year olds. Although this is, mine is showing the negative side of, um, not teenagers, but it's a negative issue, whereas this is showing a quite good issue, as it's about girls getting ready, going to a club, and um, normal life. Again, it's very factual, as it's the way they live, although there is, some of it's made up purely for the audience entertainment. Commercial viability. Um, I wrote the top five expenses of making my <coughs> documentary from the budget that I recently did um, was the voiceover artist, which obviously the amount's there, £1,148. The edit editors, which came to £900. The final cut software um, was £698.44. Uh, the microphone was £206 and the camera was £100. Um, and they're all value in my documentary as I'm going to need them all. Um, although, fortunately for me, I'm doing the voiceover artist, so that's quite, that's cut down a lot. Um, editors, again, I'm editing. Um, Final Cut software, I can receive that from the facilities that I have in school. Um, microphone, again, from the facilities that I can receive in school, and the camera as well. Um, the editor's value to my documentary, they, it's going to put it all together, make it more appealing. Um, the Final Cut software, without it, I wouldn't be able to um, edit at all. So that's a major um, value for my documentary. Um, the voiceover artist value to my documentary will make it more interesting. So instead of just having loads of footage, I've got um, it's split up three voiceovers. Um, the microphone's value to my documentary enables me to do the voiceovers. Obviously, without the microphone, I won't be able to do the voiceovers. And again, the camera is to produce footage on, which is, again, a major one. Um, and overall, my documentary's general value to the community is making knife crime a bigger issue, so making people aware of it and how... Um, how together as a community that we can prevent it, as in putting more punishments in place for those involved in it um, and gradually bringing down the figures. This enables us to live in a safer environment. Um, to, meet the BBC, to meet the BBC remit, um, I'm going to have to achieve it by informing, entertaining and educating. I want to inform my audience by telling them the punishments that are available, not available, but punishments that are occurring now um, and what could occur in the near future. Um, so what bigger punishments would there be for people involved with knife crime? Um, letting people know that there are other things to do other than um, staying on the streets bored. Um, by this, that means boarding activities, going to youth clubs, involving yourself in something different to motivate you. Um, I have to stop.